What's up, y'all? It's Zims, and welcome to another reaction video. Today, we're going to react to from the top K pop star to 13 years in prison, the rise and fall of Chris Wu. You guys have been asking for this video right around the same time I was reacting to the Say Wall or E Taiwan video. Finally, here, man, right now the voting polls are going on. So if you guys want to go back and vote right now, the last time I checked, I believe the collapsing bridge or the bridge collapsing was winning. Uh, the billionaire one was like in second place or something like that. But I think the bridge collapsing is getting smoked and it's looking like that's going to be the next reaction video. Again, let me remind you guys it's not that I'm not ignoring your recommendations, it's just I'm getting a lot of recommendations after every video and I'm taking the ones that I see the most and I'm putting those all in inside the voting poll so again do, do the same thing under this video if you guys have recommendations or if it's the same recommendations i'm going to post those in the voting poll and then we can go and react to that after the collapsing bridge because so after the chris Wu video it's going to be the collapsing bridge and we're just going to keep doing it that way but this video is by rotten mango so if you guys haven't already make sure you swoop down to the description box Comment that link, go watch this video in entirety because I'm going to be pausing, stopping, and talking through the whole thing. If you guys are new to the channel, my name is Zims and welcome to the Crow's Nest. Dun, 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 dun. All right, I'm going to stop playing around. All right, let's go. Is the story of Chris Wu and how he transformed from this global pop star extraordinaire, one of the highest earning stars in China with an estimated net worth, a rumored net worth of three to four hundred million dollars. Google will tell you it's around nine million. And that doesn't even make what? sense because what? yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you that if you want to go back and watch the beginning of the video, Stephanie was tearing this food up. Her and her husband was going in. They ate like sweet potatoes and uh, these eggs, uh, like salad muffin type sandwiches or something like that. They had shrimp, hot wings, rice, bro. They had all kinds of stuff. You want to go back and watch it, make sure you go back and do it. Yeah. I don't know. Google's like, things are weird, I guess, for Chinese stars. Nine million. Like, yeah. there was, um, like, a couple years ago, there was a huge scandal in China. Fan Bingbing? Fan Bingbing, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Fan Bingbing. So they are exposing all the celebrity on how much they're getting paid mm, mm -hmm. per show and stuff. Yeah. And ramen and these fire. celebrities are getting paid tens of millions for one movie. That's crazy. One just movie or one take TV show. Chop in comparison, there was also, I saw a clip of Korean celebrities. Oh yeah. Reacting to, <laughs> have you seen that? No, but I saw the um, videos revealing how much Korean celebrities get paid per K K drama episode. Yeah. And it's a lot, don't get me wrong. That's like an obscene amount of money. But when then you compare it to people like in America or even in China, I yeah. was like, that's nothing. Yeah, there was an episode. A bunch mm -hmm. of Korean uh, celebrity reviewing. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of them went to China <gasps> to film something. Mm -hmm. And they were like telling them how much they were getting paid in China mm -hmm. for a show. And then all the other celebrities said, oh my God. <laughs> like they're all like, they're ready to move. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> It's crazy. Is it because yeah. you guys have more people, maybe? So he goes from one of the highest earning stars in China to Toothpick Wu. Yeah, that's what they started calling him. <laughs> you know why they call him Toothpick, don't you? It's not because he had gaps in his teeth. They were referring to the size of the frivolous body part between his legs. So he went from Chris Wu extraordinaire to Toothpick Wu, and then finally convict woo that's crazy toothpick woo is insane if you guys ever call me dental floss zims or something like that to distinguish the thing that i got going on down the lower regions my heart would be extremely broken into little pieces and then my friend here is going to have to bite you in half for being mean to me at one point somewhere in the middle he became an international meme but the reality of today's story is a lot more sinister and creepier than just memes and it all starts with this kid i'm taking you all the way back Chris Wu didn't have the most marketable childhood <laughs> story for the people to rally behind. Okay, like IU, you know the K-pop star? She was born into poverty. Her parents were in massive debt. She was living in her grandparents' house that was infested by cockroaches. Ooh. And she said before, there is nothing harder than poverty. Even it BTS's is Yugi, he said that he would have $2 a day and he would have to choose between the bus or food. He didn't have enough for both. Chris Wu did not have that underdog, like, ooh, I want to root for this guy type of story. That's not to say that he didn't grow up with struggles, but it's just, um, from what I can find, it's a rather privileged background. I remember what? when I was young, uh -huh. there's a few times I was like, if I don't take the bus today, if I walk, I will save like a dollar because bus t costs a dollar. Yes. So it I used to be 25 cents. I can save for snacks in the future. Well, Chris Wu didn't have to do that. Okay, his hardworking parents were super sucked into their business. Chris at one point was raised by his grandparents and for a while things were going great until his parents got a divorce. He's mm. 10 years old at this point. Chris's mom was like, 
I'm freaking over it. Like, I'm out. Not only am I out of this relationship, not only am I out of this marital home or this town, but I'm out of the country. Goodbye, loser. She left her husband, packed her bags, took Chris all the way to Canada. Do you know how hard that is? Not just to travel to the other side of the world, but for a Chinese citizen to get into Canada at the time, one of the easiest ways in getting approved for a visa was getting an investor visa. But mm. you needed to prove that you had nearly 1 million US dollars of assets and you had to invest $500,000 into a government project. So the government would return the principal after five years, but still. Wait, so she had that saved up? Yeah. I don't know if things changed, but that's insane. That and is that's insane. what Chris's mom does. And it's just the two of them living in Canada now. Now, Chris's mom is living off the savings that she brought with her. She did not work for like nearly seven years. I'm not sure if she was becoming depressed. I don't want to speculate. But it's said that she rarely socialized. She's withdrawing from society. She's withdrawing from outside contacts. She starts getting more and more strict with Chris. I think she turned all of this energy and anxiety and pent up emotions and just dumped it on her kid that's what a lot of people do and that's what i was pretty much saying in the last video if you guys got far enough into the video where i started talking about how people have bad days and they start taking it out on people that's around them it is real because they cannot stop the source of where the pain or the frustration is coming from they direct it to the person that's nearest to them and eventually they come back and apologize to you but that's why i tell you guys you really have to be aware of your emotions and be cognizant and kind of like focused on why you're feeling that way i read like one of those books that talked about how you feel less depressed you feel less anxiety you feel less anger when you realize what it is that's making you mad so say for instance right so for instance let's just say you forgot to do your homework right and then now you're the only one that didn't get their homework you get an f for that assignment so now you're angry you're frustrated right so you go back and look like what did you do all day so earlier let's say you woke up at seven and then you're like well i went back to sleep and woke up at nine right and then my mom and my dad or whatever it was told me to go do these chores that took up most of my time but then i had to go pick up something else for my little sister and then i had to go do something at work and then i had to come back and then i didn't, wasn't able to finish my assignment right so then you would go back and list out all the things that you've done all the list of things that you could have done let's say you did go run some errands and then you sat in the parking lot for 30 minutes or something talking to somebody or you sat for an hour or you went to go visit your friend for like two hours throughout the day and then you go back and be like well I did have two hours before I woke up. I did have an hour and a half or something like that conversating with somebody. Well, I could have knocked out my homework. So is it really anybody else's fault but mine? So you're kind of like minimalizing the 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 blame game on everybody else. And it's kind of like helping you to become more responsible for your decisions, if that makes sense. So always be cognizant of why that happened, what you could have done differently, and then try to like rework that for next time. And that's like the best advice I can give you guys. I feel like when you're more accountable for yourself, I promise you your life is that much much better because no one can take that away from you and you just learn how to utilize your time better time is something that cannot get back so i recommend that you use it wisely and she's like i got big big plans for you kid you're gonna study hard get into a prestigious medical school like the type of school that everyone's eyes go wide the minute that you mention the name of the school like harvard that prestigious and from there you're gonna be a doctor you're gonna get married have some kids and bada bing bada boom so easy you're gonna live a good life you're gonna take care of yourself your family your wife but also me because i'm the one that made this happen i'm your mother and you're gonna be forever grateful to me that's the type of mom that she was mm. that was her plan and she did not tolerate anything that wavered from this little master plan of hers she decided that she knew what was going to make chris happy more than he knew she was an intense mom <laughs> yeah i heard you he was a <laughs> basketball player no mm-hmm mm -hmm. fun fact i ran into chris who once mm-hmm at uh, the gym. Oh, yeah. I didn't know who he was at the time. You didn't know who he was? Yeah. When I ran into him, it was mm -hmm. Rap of China, right? Mm -hmm. Or before Rap of China? Before. It was before mm -hmm. Rap of China. I don't know what Rap of China is. Because Rap of China, when Rap of China happened, he was huge at that yes. moment. In China, he was became a sensation. And saying, well, I'm going to walk you through it. Let's see where you fit into this timeline. <laughs> I'm be like, this was the year that he met my fiance. <laughs> How you changed his life, okay? So ultimately, they had a pretty strained relationship. She was just way too involved in his life. To the point where if he was playing a video game, she would waltz over to the outlet and just unplug the computer in the middle of his game. Yo, that's the worst Chris thing you can so do. Chris was so fed up, he ran away from home multiple times. So after five years in Canada, feeling lost, stressed, confused, the two go back to China for a little while. 
Chris goes to middle school in China. Oh, he freaking loved it. He felt like he fit in and he was taller than a lot of his <laughs> classmates. So naturally, everyone was like, you need to try playing basketball. Yeah, I'm sorry to stop the video, but one thing I just reminded myself of, it was a time where I got mad too. <laughs> when I was a kid, I used to get so mad and I used to throw stuff at the door and kick the door. So one day I caught myself running away and my mom was like the type to be like, well, you see, know you're going to come back because you have nowhere else to go. So I had left the house with like, no shirt on i had like basketball shorts i had one sock on the other sock was just barefoot and i was walking down the street i think i got like two or three blocks and then people started staring at me <laughs> and then the, uh, the embarrassment overtook the anger so i went back home and apologized <laughs> He was on the team, he was the leader, he was the captain of that school, <laughs> and they won the Southern China Championship for middle schoolers that what? year. Is it a big deal? It's middle school, baby. Yeah, I know that. You're like, what? I'm like, I didn't think I didn't know he was that good. Yeah, I didn't know if that was that impressive. So he's like, okay, mom, I peaked in middle school, so I'm gonna go to the CBA. You're like, what's that? It's the NBA, but instead of national, it's China, the Chinese Basketball, Basketball Association. Oh. Yeah, his mom, she didn't approve. She told him, that's not a career. What are you talking about? Actually, now that I think about it, you're forbidden from playing basketball as a hobby. That's because wild. technically it's dangerous. You could sprain your ankle or your wrist and then you can't be a surgeon anymore. Or you could get bonked on the head with a basketball and lose all of your brain cells. So, nope, no more basketball. She forcibly dragged him all the way back to Vancouver so that he could focus on his studies again, and it just added more and more strain to their relationship. Chris said that he frequently ran away from home just to stop arguing with his mom. He said that he understood her, like he gets it, it's a single parent household. It's not easy for her. This is the only relationship that she has. Mm -hmm. But it's tough for him because there's not this third person or a middleman to help mediate. And then two years later, Chris Wu was discovered. Oh, discovered. He Toothpick. was discovered by a Korean talent scout company, SM Entertainment. Huge, massive, like, if you know K-pop, you know SM Entertainment. Chris was scouted, and he's like, Mom, I really, really want to go. In the beginning, his mom was doing the whole, no, absolutely not, over my dead body, you little... <laughs> but I think that she probably sensed that he might run away if she said no. So she was hoping, I think, I think she was hoping that she'd be like, yeah, yeah, you can go. And then at the last minute, he would chicken out because he doesn't even know Korean. And suddenly he's going to move to South Korea and join the entertainment industry. Like, that sounds crazy, right? Yeah. Or maybe she thought that he would go and fail out of the trainee program in a week or two. But she ends up driving him to the airport. He cries and apologizes and is like, bye. And he boards the plane. She wasn't expecting it. He boards the plane to South Korea. It was the first time Chris Wu really rebelled against his mom. And it was like a huge turning point in his life. And he was officially thrust and living in the difficult life of K-pop trainees who are just trying to make it. That's Can't even crazy. imagine how hard it is. Like I heard it's borderline impossible. The stress, the pressure, manipulation, anxiety, depression. I mean, imagine. Mm. But Chris had his mom. I did not know that K-pop people went through training. Usually when people get scouted for Hollywood movies and stuff like that, they usually go on audition. If you just don't get it, then that's it. But if you get the role, they're just gonna be like, okay, this is your line, do this. This is the script. You know, you're gonna come in on these days and do that and you know your role. But I didn't know they come in and go through like a real ass k-pop training program uh for those of you that out there that's like really familiar with k-pop is it like kind of like the military i guess you can say do you like go there and they try to like make sure you smell like this and walk like this and make sure you dress like this and this is how you do your makeup and stuff or is it just like one of those things where they kind of just try to like mold you and see where you fit in at and that's where they start kind of like developing your personality because everybody knows once you're famous you don't look the same like you get these crew and tv people that come and they make you look ridiculously crazy um if you go back and look at some celebrities that what they look like before fame and after fame you would be surprised the same thing were, uh, with Ronaldo go back and look what Ronaldo used to look like compared to what he looked like now so it's it's crazy what all you can do and how much appearances can change once you come into money and fame not hating I would love to see what I would look like if I was famous I would love to see what they would do to me I would like want to see that this is mom was a lot anytime he complained about anything even the smallest little hardship his mom would pity him so much i imagine her to be the type that's like oh my god my brave son are you sure the paper cut is healing you should just quit paper in general you should go digital never touch paper again like that's the vibe that she gives me it sounds dramatic but apparently she tried to get him to quit every time he had the smallest obstacle because she felt so bad that he was stressed out 
I don't understand moms like that. Me either. But uh, he did really work hard, I guess. You can't knock him on that. He trained really hard for five years, and in 2012, he debuted with EXO. Five years? And then years? after two short years with EXO, he sued SM Entertainment, terminated his contract, and left the group and went to China. <laughs> It was shocking. A lot of people felt like it was kind of a betrayal, but I don't know. There were a lot of mixed feelings because Chris had a lot of people supporting him. K-pop companies are notorious for having insane working conditions. They're crazy for their predatory contracts and their unfair treatment. So a lot of people just kind of assumed the worst from SM Entertainment and they started supporting Chris. He goes back to China and everyone is all over him. The companies are foaming at the mouth to work with this guy. His exit from EXO was Massive. It was like a huge scandal almost. So all eyes and ears are on this guy to see what he's going to do next, where his career is going. Do the Chinese even want him back? And all these companies are like, while you have the eyes and the ears, we want you to wear our clothes. We want to be a part of that. He starts getting booked for movies, TV shows, variety shows, which are like reality shows, right? But um, kind of different. They're not like Love Island type of reality shows. They're more like celebrity focused reality shows like a bunch of celebrities come together and they do like games and stuff the uh, giant fashion houses reached out to him wanting him as a brand spokesperson and the crazy thing is chris wu originally didn't even sign with an agency when he returned to china he set up his own studio he hired his mom to be his agent slash manager she was his momager and Mama. I don't know how big they were. So the all the yeah. there's four Chinese guys who came from EXO. So Mama they all came to China, right? Do you know all their names? I know their Chinese names. <laughs> yeah. One of them is Lu Han. Mm-hmm. So Chris Wu, Lu Han, and then there's a couple of others. They were so big to a point that one of the guy took a photo with a mailbox mm-hmm. on his Instagram. He took a picture. Mm-hmm. And that mailbox, for days, there was a line for days of the fans taking picture with the same mailbox. Can you imagine touching something that everybody wants to touch that same pole? Like that's insane. They're like, oh my God, he was standing here. Cause I know a lot of celebrities say they'll take the money, but not the fame. Cause over time, the whole, you're not able to go out in public anymore. You can't eat in peace. You don't have any privacy and stuff like that. But you know, that's what you sign up for. You know what I mean? I wouldn't want that. I don't think I would want that either. Yeah, to be honest with you. But every now and again, it would be nice, you know. Uh, but I don't think I would want that too much either myself. Because sometimes I would just want to want to go out, have peace and stuff like that. But you can't really get mad at people, you know. A lot of people are like huge fans of, you know, certain celebrities. And I feel like if I was a celebrity, I would at least take that time to at least sign something or just say something nice and go on about my day. But again, I know a lot of people get tired of it. They get fed up with it. So I don't know. I can't speak on that behalf. But I know from a lot of uh, interviews and, you know, TMZ, that kind of thing, I know a lot of celebrities don't like it. Days. That's the p- influence they had. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Yeah, she was the momager to that. Like, she didn't have experience and it went as, uh, as well as you would expect. Suddenly, she had to oversee his finances, his contracts, all of his business obligations. She had no idea anything about this industry. Yeah, I it was a lot. So. so they later hired a well-known agent in the industry, which becomes like a whole scandal later because they apparently didn't pay them. They like cut them off later on and then didn't pay them certain amounts that they were owed. It's very intense. And it was pertinent for them to build a brand in China quickly. Their whole idea was we need to build an image in China before that image is built upon us. Before other people are like, oh, this is the type of person Chris Wu is. So we need to start pushing this narrative. And the aesthetic that Chris Wu went with was that he looks tall and he looks kind of um scowly. <laughs> I would say he has sharp features that Mm -hmm. don't necessarily strike me as very kind. Conventionally very attractive, but I would never look at him and be like, oh my god, like he looks so nice and sweet. Like a soft... Yeah, like he doesn't yeah. have like soft, like smiley features, right? I guess yeah. like a he comparison. Looks sharp. Yeah. Yes, very sharp to the point where he almost looks like that high fashion, almost angry kind of look, mm. right? So I think um, because of the contrast, they decided that they were going to market him as this innocent, friendly boy. Yes, he might look like that, but deep inside his heart, softy, just so soft. That's what his agent wanted him to be. And they said that the contrast between his look and his reality, that was the spice. And it freaking worked. Chris Wu started getting booked out. He even went to the Grammys. He attended an NBA All-Stars game. He oh, became wow. one of the most well-known stars, not only in China, but globally. In three years, he starred in 10 movies. The total box office for his hit movies was $811 million. That's nearly a billion dollars. 
Wait, the, they the made eight hundred. Yeah. Wow. What? Because at that point, what's an extra two million, two hundred million? So I'm rounding up almost a billion dollars. I mean, Chris Wu was who everyone wanted to be and who everyone wanted to date. His image was unstoppable. He was the it boy. Flawless. Um, yeah. Just gotta say, I don't think those movies were very good. <laughs> That's what I heard. I heard his acting is subpar. Tankaman. What? There's cheese in here. Damn, it's still crunchy. Mm. Very good. Yeah, apparently, mm. apparently his acting is pretty cringy. Yeah. I've never watched it, but... Yeah, would you still it. watch a movie if the acting is cringy? Like, I would. you finish it or you're like, okay. Well, I do. A lot of them, they hire them just for to get his fan base in, yeah. into the theater. Like, the other actors can still be good. Mm. Just he's horrible. Not just going based off of K-pop, but like movies in general. If the movie is bad, like the graphics and actors are bad, but the storyline is good, I would literally sit there and finish the movie. My sister hates me because my favorite movie is Eight-Legged freak everybody always say that movie is stupid i don't care and the crazy thing is i'm scared of spiders but that's still my favorite movie i love me some eight-legged freak my sister was like spiders don't make sound effects i had to keep explaining to her big head self was that when spiders can make noises so when they're bigger those those volumes are you know um enlarged by two times what they usually are so now you can hear the screeches and stuff like that because they're giant spiders and in 2016 he finally signed with jackie and jj productions run by jackie chan who allegedly took chris Wu under his wing like really like jackie him, chan and to have jackie chan as your mentor Man. as almost like your pseudo godfather in this business that's big it that really means is. you have some of the biggest names backing you behind closed doors like the power that jackie chan has the more chris Wu is getting booked the more he's getting paid his rate just keeps going up doubling 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 and then the peter effect took place you know what the peter effect is the peter effect is a theory about what happens in the workplace people keep getting promoted because they're a great competent employee until they get promoted so many times that they are now incompetent for the role that they have been promoted to so eventually everybody becomes peters and that is why a lot of the workforce feels unproductive is what the theory is i'm not saying i agree with this. What do you mean a lot of people become peers? Like, they all get promoted until they are incompetent in their job. And so sometimes that's why employees will complain, like, why does management all feel like so useless? Uh... It's because they're all Peters. They've all been promoted to the point where now they don't have the qualifications for their managerial position. Mm -hmm. And all the employees are like, do you guys know anything about anything? Why do you guys suck so hard? Chris Wu got mm. Petered because he was getting paid a lot, but everyone was like... <laughs> Wait a damn minute. He kind of sucks at acting. Did anyone notice? Like, yikes. They're not good. Apart from a few films that he starred in, they, um, you know, they were done by an amazing team and cast. The other films, they had abysmal ratings. Some of them in the single digits. Ooh. Everyone had a problem with his cringe acting. But who cares? Who cares? Everyone loves the guy. He went on show after show, and everyone is curious. Why is this guy single? What's he, what are you looking for in a partner, you know? Give us, give the fans at home some hope that you're single because you're waiting for one of them to show up in your life right now. And this should have been a huge red flag. It really should have been. Okay, but Chris Wu said his criteria for looking for a spouse is that she had to look angelic. She had to look pure. He wanted someone innocent, very clean, not a lot of makeup. That's what he said. That's a raging red flag. And then he said that his mom needed to be happy with his choice. In fact, compared to what he wanted, his mom's preference was even more important to him. I mean, is it the fact that it kind of sounds like he's describing someone that's under the age of 18 possibly because he's like i want somebody that's angelic i want somebody that doesn't wear makeup you sound like somebody that's like really really young i guess that's what she's pointing at you know but i don't know let me know down in the comment section if you guys think that was a red flag as well i don't feel like it was enough to make it a red flag but i feel like the way he described it would lead a lot of people to believe it was a red flag and um i don't think i mean it's respectful i don't I mean i love my mom to death if she watched this video i love her but at the end of the day if you don't like the person i'm dating i would listen to you you respectfully but i'm still going to do what i'm going to do you picked your partners it's time to pick my partner 
And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. I make that decision. You know what I mean? I'm not just go off of the fact that my mom, my mom doesn't like you, so I can't talk to you no more. I don't do that. I don't really jump into people's relationships. You like what you like, man. If that's the person you want to pursue, go for it. Try it out. That's all about life. I knew people that would break up with people because they were scared that that person may leave them or may not want them for certain reasons. And it's like, why would you do that? You could have potentially just gave a, uh, given up the love of your life because you're scared of what happens next. I don't care what happens next. Whether you break up with me tomorrow, two months from now, three months from now, two years from now, it's all memories. And I know for a fact that I've learned something in that time. Everybody that I have dated, I've learned something from that person. I left sometimes hating people and I'll look back like, wow, this person taught me to be more aware of my feelings or this person has taught me to be more assertive in certain situations, more manly in certain situations, you know? So it's like, it's not always bad. Sometimes the bad comes with some good. And again, I tell you guys all the time, pull small pieces of positivity out of everything that you go through. Whether you go to class tomorrow and fail a test, think about all the questions you got right and then go back and just study the ones you got wrong. There's always something. There's always gonna be someone that has a lower score than you. <laughs> but don't let your parents make the decisions for you. <laughs> but at the time, internal biases were at play. Confirmation bias, everyone liked Chris. So they had confirmation bias and they're like, aww. He really respects his mom. He will respect his wife. Wow. That's not always true. And then the starting signs. The house of Chris Wu was rotten from the inside. Termite damage. Mold. I mean, from the inside, things weren't looking great. But from the outside, everyone is like, wow, look at this beautiful mansion. But June 14th of 2016, the first crack was exposed. But like most things, the first crack is never taken seriously. Unless it's the butt crack. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. When there's a pattern of cracks or a series of cracks, <laughs> that's when people are like, wait a minute, that's a pothole. We should do something about it. So the first crack was an influencer named Little Gina. She was less than 20 years old and she looked like an angel. That's how everyone described her. Well, that day, she decided to tweet at Chris Wu and she wrote, From Vancouver to Canada, then to Shanghai and Beijing, in these unfamiliar cities, I have no relatives or friends. Every day I hold my phone at home and I wait for your messages. But now you've disappeared. You neither answer my WeChat messages nor my calls. Do you remember what you said to me? Reply to me even if you want to break up. What is the point of ghosting me? At Chris Wu. And to show Chris that she was serious, she didn't come to play. She posted screenshots of their chats and audio oh. messages that showed that the two had sex and Chris completely ghosted her after that. She even posted a picture of her and Chris Wu in a hotel room where Chris was falling asleep next to her. And little Gina claimed that she was confused, heartbroken. She just wanted answers for why she was being ghosted. And since he wasn't responding to her, she felt like this was the only way to get his attention. No. She felt like she had been backed in a corner. <sighs> Which, side note, one of the messages that she exposed, she was apparently going over to Chris's place to talk to him, and he texted her, if you're coming, we'll talk when you get here. And she responded, I'm here, do I just get a room by myself? You still haven't woken up yet? He responded, no, my mom's here. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> He's like 30 at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning he couldn't see her because his mom was with him and Hell he was no. serious about it, okay? The internet went wild with that one text. They dragged him less for ghosting little Gina, but for being a little mama's boy. Yep. Anyway, Chris Wu denied the story and a few celebrities, including a very famous director, defended him and the internet moved on. The only impact that it had on Chris Wu was that it made him more famous. He was getting more attention. It was like a mini controversy, like what the Kardashians do, but it was like great for PR. <laughs> in 2017, Chris Wu was invited to be on the host, or to host one of the hottest shows at the time. Oh, so you met him after, I think then. 2017? Yeah. I don't know. Well, he was a host on Rap of China. Oh, I don't know what that gosh. is. Let me tell you. This guy, <laughs> this guy is obsessed with Rap of China. He watched Rap of China every day. I would hear Rap of China in the background. And I'm like, are you serious right now? I'll, I'll tell you, it, it's a pure, yes. it's, it all started with mm -hmm. pure, like, curiosity. It's like when you first discover mukbang, <laughs> it's just like pure, like, what the f*** is this? <laughs> You know, I've never in my whole life ever heard Chinese rapper. It just sounds so weird. It's like, a, it's almost like a kink or something. 
Like when I listen to it, I'm just like, I can't believe these people. Mm-hmm. And then Chris Wu was so bizarre on there too. Everything is so bizarre. Why was about he bizarre it. on there? The first episode I saw was he's like wearing this big cape. Mm. He walks out with a cape and he's like, and he's so serious. Like anyone who watched Rap of China would know. Like he's so serious. <laughs> he doesn't even smile. The whole time he's like looking into all these quote rappers' eyes and be like, you got freestyle? You got freestyle? <laughs> and then like, you see these like rappers, they're all fumbling. Like, they don't know what to do. They're like, yeah, yeah. And then they, they rap like the most cringy rap I've ever heard. It's just such a show that I, just, I can't stop watching. Can you hear freestyle? You freestyle? You freestyle? You freestyle? You got freestyle, ma. But some people are good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you, I still slowly, like, yeah. obviously, there are good ones, too. And then I yeah. become a fan to some of them. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I am a fan of some people that were on there. Yeah, Oddly yeah. enough. Oh, yeah, who's the girl first that was on? Lexi Liu. But the other one, too. Ooh. Vava. Vava, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's where a bunch of contestants come on to rap. And there's a panel of judges, rappers, who will critique them, coach them, eliminate them, and there's a lot of wild moments. It's basically like the voice, but rap version, and Chris Wu was a fan favorite on the show. Every single episode that launched, he would have kind of bizarre outfits, if I can say it so objectively, but every episode, people would find out where every shirt, every accessory was from, they would screenshot it, post the outfit information, instantly everything would sell out. They weren't even cheap pieces, it was like Rick Owens, Bulgari watches. Since everything he wore instantly sold out, it seemed that his real niche was fashion. I guess everybody loved his fashion. So he started a variety show centered around fashion. And to really solidify his space in the fashion industry, he landed some pretty big deals. He was invited to the Met Gala. He became one of the first non-British global spokespersons of Burberry. 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 I hate saying Burberry. Okay, did you know I worked there for two days? Yeah, it was the worst. Two days. <laughs> I'm good, not gonna lie to you, it was probably like top five worst places I've ever worked in my life. It's the worst place I've ever worked had to be as a dishwasher. I worked as a dishwasher during college to help pay for like books and stuff like that, bro. Never again. My hands was looking like I got ran over by a tractor, bro. It looked like I was punching bricks. It looked like Freddy Krueger came and I tried to defend myself. He just slashed up on my knuckles. I was getting cut by food. Like it was a soul food place. So they had like a little uh, place to where it was like right next to a club. So when people got out, it was like a 24 hour soul food thing. If anybody that's not a drinker in the chat or they have been clubbing, the number one thing people do when they get out of the club is go get something to eat. It don't matter if it's pizza, shrimp, oysters, crab cakes, pop tarts, people gonna want to eat. And the one thing that sounds good to anybody is soul food and breakfast at nighttime. Pancake, hash browns, a uh, uh, catfish hot wings whatever you could think of we had and what would happen is i would come in before the shift start and then we switch out dishwashers so the last dishwasher would leave and then it would pile up plates until i got there and some of the time it would have stuff that's like crusted on there so you have like uh, cheese and stuff like that that's been sitting there for hours because it's been hard and so when you go to like scrape it and try to put it inside the dishwasher because you can't put like large clumps of food that are stuck to the plate into the dishwasher because you're just going to wash the plate and then the food is still going to be stuck on there and you got to scrape it off and it just looks nasty it's like it's like uh, unsanitary so i would come like like scrub it and i would cut my knuckles on like hard cheese or or um like uh chicken gristle and stuff like it was just that bad like my fingers was looking like it was just wrapped in band-aids all over the place <laughs> wow the culture there is bizarre i don't know if it's just that one story but they're like you can't say burberry so what dumb. i'm like you're dumb that's rude I'm leaving. Okay, so anyway, he became a global sports p- spokesperson, which I didn't know there were ranks to it, but it goes like this. For international brands, you can be quoted as a friend of the brand. That means the brand kind of likes you. They're not committed. You guys are just kind of seeing each other. They might dress you here and there. Then you become a brand ambassador. That's a step up. The brand likes you. They might dress you. You're somewhat associated with this brand for a while, right? Mm. And then top tier, brand spokesperson. That's like you and the brand are like this and your bank account is like this. Even then there's <laughs> levels to it. You could be a spokesperson <laughs> for the region, for the continent, right? For Eastern Asia, North America, or you could be a global sp- spokesperson. Uh, so the highest is go- global spokesperson. But there's layers to that too. Okay. That's so crazy. there's product specific spokespeople. So you could be a regional spokesperson for a series of products. So uh. that's like their athletic line. You're like a Uh, spokesperson just for their athletic line or just for their jewelry line. Or you could be the top tier is full 
full product line, full global ambassador. Like you are the brand. You are the brand. You, you and the br Burberry. yeah. You are Burberry. Yeah. You're wow. not just a Burberry trench coat. You are Burberry. Wow. He was that. He was that. That's insane. Yeah, and then yeah. he was Louis Vuitton, right? Yeah. And apparently after he signed with Burberry, their sales in the third quarter increased by 22 mother percent. <laughs> I mean, how much of that is Chris? I guess we don't know. Maybe Burberry knows, but that's insane. So from there, when his contract or relationship ended, he starts working with Louis Vuitton as a global spokesperson crazy, for man. them in 2018. And then in 2019, he became the spokesperson for Bulgari Watch in China. Mm. So not globally. And then he was the spokesperson of Porsche China Motorsport in 2021. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He so, lived in a dream. You know, I'm a racist in Porsche. Yeah. Yes. Side note about the Porsche deal, okay? Um, Chris decided that he was going to dabble in potential racing career because, you know, that's pretty cool. Like, vroom, vroom. he's the whole I want to be a bad boy aesthetic. Mama's boy coming through, beep, beep. And Chris broke a lot of <laughs> records. Unfortunately, they were all his own records. And during that time, rumors about potential relationships were still raging on in the background. But most single celebrity, A-list celebrities, I imagine, have those rumors. Mm -hmm. In 2019, he was spotted. He was spotted holding hands with a 21-year-old named Luna Chen. It was all over the tabloids. Luna decided to take to social media to silence the rumors. She wrote just one tweet about it. She wrote, I've always respected Chris Wu. We are not dating, and we don't have a story for you. For some reason, people did not like her statement. I don't know why. I thought it was a regular statement. Um, people did not like her holding hands with Chris Wu because immediately she became the target of backlash and bullying. A what? ton of people started accusing her of being a little schemer. They suspected that she did all of this to gain attention. She wanted to become a big social media star, and that is why she's doing this. The narrative turned from, oh my god, Chris Wu is dating someone, to Luna is manipulating Chris Wu's gentle feelings, tricked him into thinking that they were in love, and then called the paparazzi on them in the parking lot, made this picture go viral and get leaked, and now is trying to become famous off of the incident. A lot of people started to feel bad for Chris. Listen, that is some crazy PR team going. Yeah, it really is. I'm just saying, we can feel bad for anyone. It doesn't matter. But a 30-year-old man with that amount of power, fame, and money, we can't sit here and act like they're innocent. We can't sit here and be like, oh my god, they're just waiting for love. Come on. So a lot of people started to feel bad for Chris. They said that he was just a pure boy who longed for love, and his he was just so naive, and we must protect him at all costs. And this is the same behavior that we were seeing from the burning sun. The one guy, oh, he's innocent. He would never do something like this. Like, we do not know that. This is the image that the the sponsors are portraying him as, his, his talent advisors, and all these people are betraying him as this person that he's not. And even then, they said back then, he just looks super dry. He's not that soft, baby, innocent dude that they're portraying him to be and people can be so brainwashed to the point that it doesn't matter what they do what they have done it doesn't matter if they're caught on video somebody's going to make up some kind of excuse for that person to be like well he wasn't in the right mind they drugged him or he did something and they're just like no that's his characteristics that's his personality people think just because you become a celebrity that means you're a good person that is not true there's a lot of evil people that are celebrities right now and it does not mean anything just because you're a celebrity does not mean you have a good heart you heard it here first folks chris got no hate not saying that he should get hate for a dating rumor but luna got a ton of hate and chris his image of being this pure boy looking for true love only deepened which again that doesn't make sense to me like what in the romance novel trope is this you're telling me that he can't find a single girl that he wants to settle down with him and he's just waiting for the right one <coughs> you watching at home he's waiting for you i mean i get it if he's like i can't settle down because of my career but he was really kind yeah. of leaning into the whole you know i need love so anyways, things calmed down after a while until another rumor quite literally almost broke the internet. Let's talk about DMZ. DMZ is what they call her, but her name is Du Mei Ju. And she was born in 2002. She is a performing arts student. She had just taken the college entrance exam in 2020. So she's very young. And she kept getting reached out by Chris Wu's agent to meet. Chris Wu's agent is Fang Meng, a woman. And keep this in mind for later. So DMZ is rejecting each and every request to meet in person because she's like, I don't care if you're Chris Wu's agent. This is weird. Why would I want to meet with you? And then the agent was even asking for her to come to a Werewolves of Miller's Hollow card game. What is that? <laughs> what? I don't even know what that is. Oh, Long yes! and Shop. Yes, with Chris Wu. It's the same game. Yes, it's like? like Mafia, but yes, um, apparently mafia. you guys do it in like buildings or something. Like you can go to a giant building and dress up. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes. Like role play. Like mm. much more intense. I suck at role playing. Yes. 
Very popular. Yeah, the engine is like, do you want to come to this werewolves game? Of course, <laughs> Wu was going to be there. And she's like, no. And then December 5th of 2020, DMZ gets a text from Chris's agent. And she's like, Chris wants you to be the new leading role in his music video. Okay, now she's like, the werewolves. I'm kind of interested. Can you blame her? <laughs> like, that's exciting. That's like a once in a lifetime opportunity. It DMZ is. DMZ was expecting some sort of interview, some sort of process before the filming started because I'm sure he would want to meet her in person. Mm -hmm. But instead, the agent kept telling her that Chris Wu needs to meet you, yes, but he needs to meet you in his house because he's an A list celebrity. He can't meet you in public. He doesn't want to be filmed. You have to meet at his house. Make sure that you're suitable for the role. That's a red DMZ flag. was a little confused because why can't it be like an office or something? Yeah. You know, she's a little bit nervous, but she thought it's still such a rare opportunity. And let's be real. This is an A-list celebrity. Why would any one of them risk their entire careers to do something shady? The agent is a woman. It'll be fine. She gets in the car, goes over to Chris's place, and instantly she feels better. The place was packed with a ton of people. Friends, mm. entourage, people who worked for Chris, I don't know. But there were a ton of people there. But it was strange because the staff asked to take her phone. Oh, yeah, she was nervous. Um, she tried to reason that it made sense because, you know, what if she recorded something and leaked it? I heard or read that celebrities, they do have intercourse with regular people, but they have to sign paperwork saying they won't leak or mention their contact with that person. How true that is, I do not know. But most of the time, if you go to something like this, they will take your cell phone just in case you decide to record something that shouldn't be recorded or if they conduct something illegal and you just happen to catch it and it kind of like ruins their image. So there's a lot of things, right? Everybody talks about the Illuminati and then the background of all the stuff that goes on in Hollywood. So one can only only imagine what kind of things are being done behind closed doors where it's not being seen by the human eye or by normal people like myself and you guys watching this video so i don't know it's it's a lot to take into consideration i don't really know too much about being it but you never know i'm always interested though if i can like have like a little thing where i can kind of like see into the future or see through walls and see what people are doing i would love to do it but so they took her phone, she continues into the apartment, and she found out very quickly to her disappointment, it was not a work gathering, but it was a drinking party. DMZ was stressed. She didn't know a single person in that room. She's not really a drinker, and they're all pushing drinks on her aggressively. They kept saying things like, you got a dream job to star in the music video, don't you want to drink with your idol? Can't you just do one shot with your idol? Like, you guys have to know each other before the music video just to take a shot. Peer pressure, don't DMZ do it. DMZ felt like she couldn't say no. So she drank a bit too much. She ended up throwing up and blacking out. Mm -mm -mm. And around 7 a.m., she woke up and she had sex with Chris Wu. Okay. She fell back asleep and then woke up again in a daze. So if she woke up again in a daze, it's speculated that she probably wasn't that super coherent when she engaged in sexual activity with Chris Wu. Um, she said that she stared at the ceiling in bed for a while. She couldn't believe what just happened. Chris is laying next to her and everything felt just like a blur. She just wanted to get her clothes and run home and puke. She tried to get out of the bedroom as quietly as possible to not wake up Chris, but instead, Chris's cousin was sleeping in the living room. And basically, like, she couldn't get out without waking this person up. It was really uncomfortable. So this person is pertinent later. So now DMZ can't leave. She just has to wait in Chris's bedroom until the cousin wakes up so she could get out of there. She just said that she awkwardly stood in there for a while because she was just in so much shock. And Chris woke up and asked her, why are you standing? He pulls her back into bed. She's clearly confused. And he tries to calm her down by saying, mind you, this is the first time they've ever met each other. This mm. is the first time they've ever even spoken to each other. He said, be my girlfriend. I'll be responsible for you. I'll love you, take care of you for the rest of your life. I'll take Rip you to meet my mom on Chinese New Year. I can help you with your career. He essentially love bombed her. Now, to give you some perspective, she's 18 at this point. She had like just turned 18 and she's young and he's showering her with praise, attention. This is... And Chris was um, 30. already what? Like almost 30, I yeah, think. Yeah, almost 30. Yeah. So the, just the age difference is a huge power imbalance. But think about the true power imbalance. A-list celebrity, the money, influence, fame, power that he had. He essentially love-bombed her. And from even just a normal person, being love-bombed is a lot. But coming from the hottest celebrity in the nation, I mean, just think about the psychological confusion that she mm -hmm. probably had. DMZ said that she genuinely believed that Chris wanted to date her. And the two added each other on WeChat. She was so excited. You know, that was a scary, confusing night, yes. But now in her mind, she was at least convincing herself that it was the start of a love story, right? Which, I mean, I can totally see that. I don't know why so many people come for this poor girl. Like, it's beyond me. Just imagine your dream crush 
who happens to be a celebrity starts showering you with love like it's toxic and there's no way to even help yourself but fall for it honestly Chris would even bring her around to his friends to make her feel special make her feel like they were the real deal and his friends were probably like oh he never brings girls around like you're different and for her birthday he transferred her five thousand dollars to buy whatever she wanted which DMZ felt super loved but side note DMZ came from a well-off family and she had a monthly mm. living allowance of nearly $15,000. So she's not a gold digger. 15,000 allowance, man, you could pay off a car in two months. Not like out here trying to what? take him for his pennies and his, you know, money. You know, it's not like she was holding on to him to survive, which is a thing because people think that she was out for money. She genuinely thought that they were dating and she genuinely thought that he was falling in love with her because he was basically telling her that nonstop. But of course, everything had to be a secret. Nobody could know that they were dating because, you know, the industry. Mm -hmm. So after a few months of secretly dating, radio silence. She gets ghosted. Just straight up ghosted. And then Chris Wu was photographed by the media with another girl. May 28th of 2021, Chris Wu was allegedly spotted on a date with a girl in a movie theater that he had booked out the whole theater. There's CCTV footage of them walking in together, walking out together, and even just sitting in the movie theater, just them two. Immediately, his team responded. They were pissed. They called out the theater for violating Chris's privacy, but they also said that Chris had booked the whole theater for a private showing for all of his friends, and the security footage was taken at a convenient time when the other friends hadn't joined them yet, because they all came at separate times wow. they hmm. said that someone edited the footage to make it seem like something it wasn't the movie theater company issued a formal apology for violating the privacy of chris Wu. they said the employee has been taken care of probably they were fired but also they threw some tea into the fire they said by the way nothing was edited goodbye <laughs> <laughs> wow. so... they were like okay yeah we violated your privacy but hey you're lying about this part we may have violated your privacy but we did not edit no video we don't have no videographers or anything photographers like that on on standby to be editing footage they, they threw them under the bus yeah wow. that was another dating scandal but then there was another one like almost immediately after netizens found an influencer who had just turned 18 years old and she was wearing mm. a necklace and it seemed like the one that chris Wu had been wearing just recently and i guess it's like a very special type of necklace like not a very common one that you can just buy and it became a whole thing and it made sense because she was completely his vibe she was pretty just freshly turned 18 super innocent very pale apparently he liked pale girls and uh there was a rumor that he was dating her too and the whole time dmc is just on the side reading all the news and she feels utterly gutted she felt depressed after he ghosted her i mean she went from being in her own fairy tale being love bombed by him and being told that she was special and they were soulmates to radio silence she felt like she did something wrong like it was her fault in some way or she wasn't good enough in some aspect so what he's doing is typically manipulating young women so a lot of times i don't know if you guys want to agree with me with this or not but a lot of times younger women are more susceptible as being manipulated or tricked into thinking that that love is there right um like they said they shower them with gift they tell them everything that they want to hear because again they haven't been exposed to that much love or that much contact with men right right the most average girl most of the time uh they are not exposed to that kind of stuff so when they do get exposed to it they're like oh my god i'm head over heels for this dude like why me i feel so perfect he's so happy he's older he has everything going for him he's going to take care of me he loves me and he's just manipulating them to get into their pants and he's going to keep doing it every person that he's had contact with and end up sleeping with he's ghosted the girl from the beginning where he was like oh you know you ghosted me it's the text messages and he said oh i can't come because my mom is here ghosted her went to dmz ghosted her and he's about to talk to this girl and he's going to ghost her next he's literally picking up naive girls or women because of of his fame status and his financial uh position in life i'm not trying to make it seem like you know the women are naive but young people tend to be a little bit more naive than let's say myself or someone that's watching this video that's probably about 28 27 years old been in a couple relationships where you kind of be like okay i've heard this before i need to see a little bit more i need to see some actions you know words are great but i need to see a little bit more oomph before i start kind of like opening my doors and letting you into my private life and before i start giving you 50 60 percent or whatever your rule may be you know before it goes into the other direction but these girls they see looks they see money they see clothes they see all the little nice fancy words they see the whole new world you know the whole aladdin theory and they just can't help themselves and they go end up looking naive and they end up heartbroken and it's just a horrible 
thing for everybody involved except for the person that's doing the manipulating because they're pros at this they know the right things to say and they use it to their advantage and they go to the next victim and the next victim and the next victim and i'm pretty sure he's going to mess with the wrong victim and that's pretty much what probably landed him uh 13 years that's pretty much i was in the title so We'll see. DMZ's friend said that she went from being someone who was always on top of her grades, like top of her class, and now she couldn't even get out of bed to go to school anymore. Told it you. was a lot. It was actually her friend who ousted all of this to the public. Her friend took screenshots from DMZ's phone of Chris Wu with DMZ's permission and all of their conversations, even Chris Wu sending her selfies and shared the whole story with the whole world of how dmz went to his house for you know a music video audition and then they had sex and then he love bombed her and then now he she ghosted her mm -hmm. and the shock was instant everyone was confused i mean <laughs> i mean what there's even a selfie that chris texted her that had never been posted on the internet before so i mean it had to be him right well, his team responded the next day saying that DMZ needed to take the whole thing down because they were planning to file a lawsuit for infringing content. DMZ responded that she wasn't scared of being sued. She was over it now. This is where things start getting crazy. This is where things start heating up. Everyone is confused what the fork is going on. Everyone wants to know the tea. But just like Luna, everyone starts accusing DMZ of just doing this all for attention. Some people even commented on her socials. Chris Wu likes you. Has he ever seen you without makeup? Wow. All you're thinking about is growing a following and trying to trend on the news. You want to be famous so bad that you're going crazy. All of this for money, really? Chris Wu used this PR moment to promote his new song, and he wrote a cryptic tweet that said, no snowflake in an avalanche ever feels responsible. Before you think the guy is smart. It's actually a famous line from a Polish poet, so he didn't come up with it. But it's like saying that everyone is responsible when an avalanche <laughs> happens, meaning if someone gets incorrectly canceled off of fake news then every single person who left a comment or pushed a narrative is responsible even if they don't feel like they're responsible because they're just a regular person with no following and they're not media outlets but yeah chris is basically saying that every comment or every netizen that is throwing fuel to the fire is guilty and responsible and then more news hit July of 2022 is a busy month. Three years ago. DMZ alleged that Chris had a special WeChat account that was specifically used to add underage girls. He had a middleman choose them on the internet and they had to fit this strict criteria. And once you listen to this, you're gonna gag. You're gonna want this man behind bars. He wanted only 18 <laughs> year olds, girls that were specifically born after the year 2000. <laughs> And he would consider underage girls who were going to take the college entrance exam soon, meaning they were going to turn 18 soon. Allegedly. Oh. After that, he would have his agent invite the girls over under the premise of having them feature in his music video. Then they would push mm. all the drinks onto this girl, DMZ said, and then he would take his chance to sexually assault these girls and tell them tender words afterwards so that they <coughs> don't report it, like, I will be responsible for you. Things like that. DMZ said she was exposing it all now because she said, I wanted to face everything bravely and live a new life, but now you let your fans harass and attack me? Don't be fooled by this perfect person in front of you deceived young girls look at the facts and sure enough more and more girls started to come forward with similar stories about Chris Wu DMZ said the number of victims may have exceeded 12 already eight victims have reached out to me including two underage girls DMZ said that she was bringing all of this to the internet because she wanted everyone to see Chris's true colors and not be fooled by this guy this way he can't hurt any more young girls she said all the girls all the victims just want a simple and sincere apology. Why is that so difficult? I don't think I have to put up with it anymore. Just wait and see. In a few days, the same victims will report to the police with evidence. So she's basically threatening, not threatening in the sense that like threatening, but like, hey, you need to take accountability. Otherwise, we're going to force you to take accountability for your crimes. The pressure, the drama, the allegations. I mean, they were amping up. DMZ accepted an exclusive interview with a media outlet, and she said that she had evidence that she was ready to file into a police report after sorting everything out. And she said that this evidence could put him behind bars for a really long time. She also talked about the death threats and harassment that she's received online. I mean, it was brutal. Chris's friends would say some pretty vile things like, didn't you say that you were depressed? Why don't you go kill yourself? Wow. Why don't you just call the police then? Are you scared that you have no evidence? Another commenter wrote, are you just a that anyone can sleep with? 
Someone wrote, what's the point of being alive? You're way too ugly to make this much drama happen. I hope you die soon. Like, I understand you're trying to support your celebrity, but when it starts coming to like, you're telling people to do things that was going to harm themselves or others, I feel like now you're kind of like pushing. It. It's time for you to take a little bit of time away from social media because now you're saying things that you don't, you're taking up for somebody that you haven't even met. Like that's insane. That's like somebody said, hey, Zim's is ugly and everybody's like, oh, I'll hope you go and do this. And this happens to you and your family. Like it's, it's never that serious. Like. I will never understand the infatuation that people have with people they've never met. I don't get it. I don't know if they say something. I don't know if it reminds them of something. I don't know if it's just like they reminds them of like somebody like godly. I don't know what it is, but I've never had that feeling. I really wish to see what it's like because I just don't get it. And I knew it was going to fall back in his hand. I mean, going back to what Stephanie had mentioned earlier about the whole angelic and no makeup and stuff like that. That's why I say you can kind of swing it each way. You know, there's older women that do not wear makeup and they still look amazing. There's younger girls that wear makeup and look amazing, but I I feel like what he was describing like angelic innocent right when you hear the word innocent you think of somebody like you think of a child right because usually childs are considered innocent kids younger teens and stuff like that are considered innocent because they're in their prime they're in their youth so you're more likely to be considered innocent versus somebody that is an older age because now you've already done things that would probably not make you innocent anymore in the eyes of someone that hasn't done anything at all. So yes, he is a predator and he's on the prowl. Um, why? Sponsored by Burberry, Louis Vuitton, Bulgari or Bulgari, whatever it is, Porsche deals, motorsports, moves, music videos, movies and stuff like that. And they just throw it all away. Why? I don't know. I don't know why people don't just utilize women that of their age. There's a lot of beautiful women that 25, 28, 30, some women even 40 years old that look like they're in their 20s. So they're out there somewhere. I just don't understand why they want to select the immature, younger crowd. I don't know, but that's some creepy stuff especially if somebody in your position in your status you would think like you're not going to get away with this you're a big name you would think that people would be smart enough to be cautious to not do things like this because people will take screenshots and try to m make you or uh, look bad or even bring you to justice for doing some of the stupid things that you have done so that's why it's like it's crazy i really hope that they find justice but i'm pretty sure that they did again given the title of the video but let's finish it chris's fans still supported him and at this point in time he had a lot more supporters than haters but as the screenshots come rolling in, the group becomes smaller and smaller. And uh, they would say things like, she just wants to be famous. We gotta support Chris Wu in defending his rights. Because regardless of this guy, this woman is not a saint in the first place. They were straight up saying things like, they can see right through DMZ. And they know that she just wants to be famous. I mean, she's doing the absolute most. But the rational Chris Wu fans... They tried to be impartial. They hoped that DMZ would go to the police, and if the allegations were true, then the police would hold Chris accountable, and they were disappointed that these allegations were coming out. Kind of waiting to see how things played out. They didn't want to jump the gun either, but they didn't want to sit there and hate on DMZ and defend Chris Wu. They were just trying to be rational. So it was a bit of a shock to everyone when the first news of a police report came out, and it was from Chris's mom. Chris Wu's mom reported to the police that her son was being blackmailed by DMZ. I'm sorry, what? So naturally, everyone assumed, yeah, DMZ is probably blackmailing them for money. For two days, it was pure chaos before DMZ responded to the allegations by saying she had been connected with other victims of Chris's and they said that they had all been depressed, self-harming, some of them had abortions, some of them had contracted STDs. She confirmed to the public that she had filed a police report already and she posted screenshots of her conversations with Chris Wu's team talking about money. So she's trying to be as transparent as possible, it seems. The truth is, yeah, she did talk to Chris's team about money. At first, Chris's team wanted to ask her, what, what do you want? Like, what do you want to take all of this down? What do you want to make this go away? And she wrote that she just wanted a public apology and for him to stop hiring spam accounts to smear her reputation. They responded that they never hired spam accounts and that he would never publicly apologize. It was impossible. Instead, they hoped that they could all reach a financial agreement. So DMZ did. She asked them for a million dollars. She said that she was going to split it with eight other victims. So that's nine people splitting a million dollars. And they hit her back with, we can do 140000 with the condition that you delete all of your posts and post an apology letter that you keep up for at least 24 hours. Do you understand what you're dealing with right now? I don't know about y'all, but you would think like, hey, that's a good deal to take. But like, he's just digging himself a deeper hole. Like, bro, you're about to get charged with eight to 10 counts of probably, um, 
SA against a minor and amongst other things and you don't want to drop a million when you've made 811 million dollars I don't know what to say about that like I'm glad he was stupid enough not to take it because he's in jail now but like they say only the stupid criminals get caught and this is perfect like proof of that and then amongst the other videos that we reacted to you would think like hey that's all I that's all 1 million if you think about it dude's worth almost a billion dollars 1 million dollars is the equivalent of giving somebody like a hundred bucks to be like okay go away get away from me he didn't want to give a million dollars this is insane after the sponsors all this money he made 1 million was just like this is a no for me wow 140,000 for nine victims this goes to let you know that he does not respect them as a human beings or even as women he just doesn't care it's Admitting. crazy because a million is literally nothing just crazy. said it yeah. just so said it nothing. google says he's worth nine million he's not he's probably worth at least a hundred million if not more Way just more. Yeah, yeah based on the crazy deals that he was getting in china so okay the reason i know that he's worth more is because later he actually gets fined by the chinese government for tax evasion and they find him 85 million dollars i'm assuming that means you have to make way more than that to yeah. be find 85 million dollars for, for tax evasion for tax yeah so mm -hmm. the guy made more than 85 million freaking dollars okay he's he's got a lot of money so a million dollars really is nothing to it's keep his really career not. and i'm not saying that he should be doing this i'm just saying it's on top of all of this he's also a cheap ass like Man. what yeah. they said 140 thousand dollars She's like, okay, maybe closer to like 400,000 because that's a lot of victims that we're splitting it amongst and like none of us really have jobs because we all can't function like normal human beings because we're depressed and anxious. But they were like, we'll think about it. But you need to admit that you're wrong and you need to admit that Chris Wu no, did not engage in sexual activity with underage girls. Don't do it. And DMZ was pissed about that. She wrote in the text messages, I'm the one that was hurt. Why should I apologize? Man. And the person was like, just make the promise. What else can you get if you end up getting no money? There were more negotiations until they finally settled on $300,000 with a written guarantee, a contract, if you will. The staff even kindly provided her with an apology template for her to use and post online. It goes as follows. I was acting on impulse when I posted those things. I was hurt. I believed articles that weren't verified, but my suffering was true. It's been a few days. And I don't want to make a fuss. I don't want people to say that I'm looking for attention anymore. I'm exhausted. Let's just all settle down now. She shouldn't DMZ have done it. DMZ agreed, but she said that she wanted to add that Chris has already privately apologized to her. This was a huge point of contention for her. Chris's team did not want that. They did not want any admission of guilt or any apology, but DMZ wanted to include it. It almost cut the whole deal off. Chris's team demanded another line be added into her statement, and it would read... I have received an apology in private. It is untrue that he chose concubines and pressured girls to drink and have sex with minors. The reason why I posted those things was because I was hurt. People's interpretation is becoming further and further from the truth. Some even allege that he girls. I don't want to waste public resources anymore. I don't want to be told I'm looking for attention. I've let it go. I want to start my life over. Be at peace with each other. I hope everyone understands. DMZ refused. She wanted to add either the words, he knows what he did, or he already apologized in private. The two nah, sides man. went back and forth and back and forth on this whole apology, and finally they found a middle ground. She would post the apology, and then I think later she would maybe cryptically post that he apologized. But it was like $300,000 that they settled on, right? But she was going to get $70,000, and then she would have to sign a formal agreement, and then she would get the rest of the money. So it would come in batches. And now... No statement she released would ever be <laughs> taken seriously if it was similar to that because she posted all the text messages between her and Chris's team. And now, not to mention only her, now imagine the future victims that he's going to press. So when they try to come out and step forward, they're not going to believe her because all those supposed victims just got paid out and no one's ever going to believe the other people. So I'm trying to figure out how he's going to get caught up because she pretty much let it go. And he's like, pretty much right now as a standpoint, I would probably say he's feels like he's untouchable right now because he just got away with eight or nine counts of SA and drinking and, you know, influencing minors and stuff like that. So he's feeling like he's on top of the world right now. I'm pretty sure at this point in time, he was like, we did it. My team is working effectively. We got where we were coming for. We gave them what they wanted. We knew they wanted money. We knew it would go away if we gave it to them. And I really wish she would have said no and just continue to like bash this dude because I felt like she was making so much room uh, for the other people. And I feel like he was going to collapse. But let's see who else gets him. Somebody's going to have to get this dude. Because Chris's mom accused her of blackmailing them for money. 
So technically, this was all going on behind the scenes. But uh-huh. then Chris's mom went to the police and was like, we're getting blackmailed by this girl. Oh, so yeah, the police yeah. were like, we're looking, investigating about these blackmail claims. So then DMZ was like, oh, yeah? Okay, fine. I'm not going to get accused of blackmail. Let me post these screenshots. Oh, these text messages, yeah. the negotiation of the money, yeah. she just exposed it all. We, before even posting that statement. Oh, she wouldn't expose right, right, it? Right, yeah. right, 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 right. Just so, to show people what they're trying to yes. hide. Yes. So she had gotten $70,000, or she had already gotten the $70,000, but she was supposed to sign the contract, then post the statement, and then get the rest of the money, right? Well, she had exposed all of these text messages about the negotiations after she had gotten the $70,000, but before she signed the contract. Uh-huh. So people were confused. They're like, so you are blackmailing him for money? Like, what's going on? DMZ explained the money wasn't just for her. It was her and eight other victims, and they had all been depending on their families for their livelihoods. They had burned through their savings. They weren't going to work. I mean, this was compensation for them. It, it was going to be split between nine people just to help them get back on their feet. And it's not like Chris Wu would have missed the money. He she said have. that he was loaded and she knew it i mean if you google it like i said it's gonna say nine million but a lot of people in china believe it's closer to like 400 million he truly is killing it or was killing it so you think three hundred thousand dollars is even a lot for this guy when it's just for these victims for these girls to get their life back together so truly her request was not much for nine irrevocably traumatized people so anyway the team agreed and they said that they would be transferring her the money in batches she got the $70,000. She posted these receipts. Now, the $70,000 came from two different bank accounts. One was under Chris's name, and the other one was under Chris Wu's mom's name. Mm. So mommy is still out here cleaning up his messes. And then after posting this, DMZ took the contract that Chris's team had given her to sign. Remember, she had to sign it. She ripped it. To get the it. rest of the money. Went to a lawyer. She hadn't gone to a lawyer prior to this. And this lawyer was like, pump the f- brakes. Because this contract that they sent you, basically, you're admitting to blackmail, extortion, and coercion. And they could take this contract, go to the police because you signed it. You're basically admitting to committing crimes and you could have been thrown in jail for 10 years. Wow. They were basically asking for her to sign a confession. The other side would have used this as evidence. And if you're like, okay, well, why didn't she read the contract? She did. It's very complicated legal contracts. And she's 18 years old. She like... Remember when you're 18? Like, I was so scared of legal... I'm still so scared of legal contracts. And my dumbass don't even read the terms and conditions on these apps. I'd be like, hmm, I accept. I don't even know what I'm signing. I don't read any of it. I'll read it and be like, hmm, I think that's okay. And I'll just proceed. Like, I, I'm almost 30. And I don't... I wouldn't even know what to read. I, like, I would literally have to go get a lawyer myself. I don't be reading contracts. I don't even know what I'm reading. I need somebody that's smart enough to be like, okay... This is what you're signing, and they'll break it down to me in Barney style. That's what I need. I'm the same exact way. I don't know what the hell I'm reading. It sounds nice, though. 18? So she posts the contract, and everyone is spitting out their coffee. Like, netizens are like, if you sign this contract, they would have f***ed you up. You probably would have gone to prison. I mean, why would they even send you this contract unless that's what they wanted to do? Mm -hmm. So the netizens were arguing, but hold on to your arms on this one because it gets really wild. Like, really, really wild. There is a scammer in the mix. The mom. I'm going to come back to it. I'm going to come back to it. The mom or who's the scammer? Keep this in mind. These conversations do not end here. This whole blackmail thing does not end here. Just wait till the, just wait till a little later. DMZ is fed up. She said, we don't want any compensation anymore. So don't come to us with that. We want justice. She also showed proof that her physical and mental health had deteriorated. She was diagnosed with anxiety, depression. She was receiving electroshock therapy for that. She, her um, health scores were really low in terms of stress, fatigue, insomnia. And then July 2021, DMZ posted a long article exposing how Chris Wu lures the girls. So it's like a step-by-step of how he does it using an excuse looking for an actress in the studio the team Mm. selects beautiful fans and sometimes if successful he ends up sleeping with them he will allegedly even give out rewards of fifteen hundred dollars to whoever whatever employees set him up step two invite the girl to a night drinking party at his house pressure her to drink if she wants to leave chris's agent will threaten to destroy her career Step three, he will let his cousin threaten the girl if she tries to leave and tell the police. That's why he sleeps in the living room. 
Mm. While Chris and the girl are in the bedroom, his cousin is going to make sure that nothing happens in the living room, like she doesn't escape. Chris will soften up the girl to make sure that she doesn't go to the police by saying things like, I only like you, I'm only here for you, I want you to meet my mother. Like he said that to every girl. And he would always use the next upcoming holiday. So sometimes it was, I want you to meet my mom for Chinese New Year. I want you to meet my mom for Mooncake Festival. I want you to meet my mom for Christmas. It was like whatever the next holiday was. It was also exposed that allegedly he would say some really, really weird stuff before he engaged in sexual activity. A lot of girls corrobor um, corroborated this story that he would say, and apparently this is like a routine for him, he would say to the victim before penetration, I'm very big, hang in there for a second. <laughs> And after finishing two to three minutes later, he would look for validation from the girl and he would ask, how was it? Am I good? Aren't I big? Every one of my exes said I was too big. That's so embarrassing, yeah. bro. Yeah. And like, I know it's not funny in the context, but the internet really had a field day with this one. Even the victims were making fun of him. DMZ said, women are willing to lie to you when they love you. And she suggested that he needs to change his name to Toothpick Woo. <laughs> because the feeling of intercourse with him is like sticking a toothpick in your nose. <laughs> Yo, that <laughs> Yo, you know it's small when you gotta be like, aren't I big? How was it? Are you okay? Do you need ice? Do you want me to get a wheelchair out for you? Like, come on, bro. Like, no. Oh, that's so cringy. I wonder, yo, if you guys are really comfortable, men and women, please let me know down in the comment section. If you ever experienced something weird like this during any kind of date or intercourse, I would love to know. I'm surprised what some people say. He said it's big, ain't it? All the girls say it's huge. Like, like people don't say what they are. You just let other people label that for you. You know what I mean? That's so cringy. Toothpick woo. I take Tic Tac or or uh or, or raisin or something, bro. Toothpick? Man, that's like ultra disrespectful, bro. That's like super skinny. You're not beating nothing down with that. Average. This would be a good time to bring up some of his alleged text messages that he sent to girls. And buckle up because it's cringe town now. Oh, a woman no. came forward to expose messages between her and Chris. Chris kept telling her, he's nearly 30 at this point, that he's looking for a serious relationship and he just wanted to find someone to love and marry. He's looking for a clean girl with a good obedient personality obedient god anyway he continued that he fell in love with her at first sight through her pictures because get this her figure her personality and her light skin is exactly what he was looking for at this point the two hadn't even met yet and he's doing all of this he also asked her are you single did you ever have sex before and then he lectured her a girl's first time is very important. Don't give it to a boy easily. Oh my God. You know, a man's capability is more important, so his first time doesn't really matter to him. Oh, that's so cringy. Anyway, she said that they would eventually meet at a hotel, and it was a lot. He kept pushing drinks on her. He tried to feed her with his mouth. Like, Ew. and then she rejected him, and then he tried to grab her boob. And she rejected him again. And thankfully, she was coherent because she had a high alcohol tolerance, which I guess he wasn't expecting. <laughs> so she's like, mm, I'm still not tipsy and you're a creep. Another girl came forward and she posted alleged text messages between them. And he wrote, silly piggly. I've always wanted to ask you a question. Silly piggly. Will you hurt me? <laughs> like one day if we're not together anymore, will you hurt me? And she responded with crying emoji and hit him with the, are you dumb? <laughs> Cause it's really dumb, who writes that? And he wrote, ha 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 ha, okay baby. The reason I ask is because I'm scared. <laughs> I've been hurt before. <laughs> I'm guessing he's thinking like maybe if I talk like a teen, it's gonna get me somewhere. Oh my god, this is so horrible. Sigly Piggly for what? That's like calling somebody your moonshine bear or my raspberry cocoa puff or something. That's so oh no 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 no. He tried to bird feed this woman and then grabbed a titty, bro. <gasps> this dude is a. It has to be something wrong with this man, bro. They gotta check his medical history. There's no way. Or maybe it's just because his mama's been like like coddling them for so long and stuff like i don't know what it is but dude is not in the right mindset i don't know what the hell is going on with this guy weird he's like one of those 
older people that hang around their old high school like bro go home man you got a whole family like go home go love your kids like what are you doing it used to be people at the football game like oh yeah man i remember when i used to play bro when did you graduate oh 1984 like bro what you, what are you doing here like that's why i asked <laughs> in another conversation he allegedly uh... wrote baby can you keep me company today i can't sleep without you stephanie is came home from set can you keep me company <laughs> <laughs> very whiny okay very whiny so a lot of cringe now back to the crimes dmz said that chris never wore condoms Ugh. never took any precautions and finally dmz ended the article by giving chris Wu an ultimatum she said that she chose to disclose everything online instead of to the police because she wanted her to hear an apology but she said that she had information that would put him behind bars for 10 years so her demand was that he hold a press conference within 24 hours write an apology letter and also announce his withdrawal from the entertainment industry otherwise she would ruin him dmz said i can ruin your reputation even if i don't reveal what happened to those girls hurry up and get ready mr Wu. this is a battle dmz reflected on her whole life and she said i clearly know that my life has been destroyed although i only had sex with chris the public thinks that i'm a my future husband and mother-in-law will probably bring this up when we fight maybe my children will be called the child of a school like my mm -hmm. life feels ruined but i can't ruin the other victims because i for one am a human being more women came forward, including one of Chris Wu's earliest reported girlfriends, and she just made a cryptic post that read, Justice after seven years? Give it to me. Now, this is around the time that the police started to show interest in this case. CCP got to work, Chinese Communist Party. They hid the promotions of Chris Wu's new song as a precaution, and brands start dropping like flies. Till finally, yep. Chris Wu lost all 15 of his major contracts. Look how many deals this dude had. 15. Dude didn't have a million dollars. Bro, get out of here, bro. How do you give up something like this? I would kill for this. <gasps> Not literally, but I would kill for this. Look at all those men. What? I would literally have giveaways for all this stuff to all you guys. If I was in a position where they're just giving me clothes like every month, I would give away a certain amount of merchandise to you guys just for tuning into my videos. That's what I would do with it. Because like I said last week, I don't really care for name brand. I might keep some things that look nice i'm not buying it if you want to gift it to me i'll take it but i will not go out of my way to buy lewis Vuitton or anything like that but 15 and you threw it all the way for underage girls mm -mm -mm. he wanted the calf when he could have got the whole cow usually when the drops it's overnight yeah everyone drops at the same time crazy yeah. it seemed that the only way to get chris Wu to respond was to mess with his endorsements because he finally posted a personal statement which i'm sure was just read over nonstop by his entire team of lawyers and publicists but you get it it wasn't his team or his mom talking for him he posted it and i'm not sure if he wrote it but he wrote i didn't respond before because i didn't want to interview with the judicial system but i didn't expect my silence would make rumor mongers more ruthless i can't stand it anymore i only met miss do once no selection of women no no underage girls if that did happen please be assured that i will go to prison myself Oh, well, you might get your wish, buddy. People weren't really buying it at this point. A comment under his post told him to, and I quote, get lost. And that got a million likes. <sighs> People had gone up to dig all the prior red flags that they felt like they had missed. So remember the fashion show that he was on, or the reality fashion show? It's called Four Try. Yeah. I actually watched that one too. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So um, basically, the reality series is Chris becoming a store manager at a pop-up clothing store in Tokyo that specializes in like Chinese streetwear. He has to run the store basically. And he can't just be like, I'm Chris Wu. I'm going to hire a bunch of people. Basically, it's watching him have a real job. <laughs> like he has to do the merchandising. He has to do the store displays, marketing, like everything. And it's like the ups and downs. And his whole team of people, a lot of them would be celebrity guests. There would be other celebrities that were there that were help running this store. Angela Baby being one of the most notable ones. Anyway, there was another young guest celebrity on there. Her name was um, Zhao Jinmai. Zhao Jinmai. Zhao Jinmai. Yeah, she was 17 at the time. Um, and during the show... Chris was showing a ton of attention to Zhao. She, he's 29. She's 17. 
And alarmingly, she's exactly his type. So she has this cute, innocent vibe to her. And in one of the episodes, she's modeling their newest collection, which is like this pink puffer jacket. And the overall look is very cute, right? Yeah. Everyone around them is just complimenting that her. And she's like, oh, the, the clothes look cute. You look good in that. Like, you look so good. You can pull off anything. Like, these are normal things to say to a 17-year-old trying on clothes. But Chris came in there. And he grabs her arm and is like walking away from everyone else with her in tow. And he says, and the translation is, wow, you look so adorable. Let's go. We're off work now. Let's go home. Okay, like, let's go home. I think, okay, in Korean, let's go home has a very sexual undertone. I don't know if it does in China. I don't know. But in Korea, like when guys say let's go home to their wives or girlfriends, it's usually like in the tone, like this playful tone, it's like a I can't wait to go home to rip your clothes off tone. It's very disturbing the fact that he's doing it in plain sight and people are like, it's cute, it's funny. Which is crazy because, mind you, I have lived in Japan. They do stuff like this. A lot of the stuff are like cutesy and they don't take a lot of things serious. So it may have flew over a lot of people's heads like, oh, he maybe he didn't mean it that way. A lot of times when you're watching the news or you're watching these little shows on Japanese television or like, you know, Korean television, they're playing around, they're having fun and stuff like that. It's not taken serious. They put sound effects, it'd be like, boy, boing, 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 and all, all this other thing. They'd be like, oh, like, it's just crazy. It's super entertaining. So you wouldn't even think twice about him doing it. So that's why I'm like, now that we know what he's doing and is capable of, it's like, oh my God, he's doing it. But if you were just watching that on TV, you wouldn't think twice. I promise you, you wouldn't. It looks weird. It sounds weird. But if you're watching regular, like Korean, Asian TV, like you're, you would not think twice about it. What makes it worse is that the allegations and stuff against him is like now you go back and watch this stuff, just like Milk Boy from the last video, it's like you don't really pay attention to it until there's something on the line that's kind of like dragging their name in the mud. That's that. So I want to know what you guys are thinking down in the comment section. Unless they're really mad. They're like, let's go home, you know? But no, it's, it's weird. And he turns to everyone and he says, I'm going to take her away now. Angela baby butted in and said, your daughter? Yeah. <laughs> so nobody thought anything of it then, but now looking back, it seems like Angela baby maybe was trying to create distance between them, like trying to tell him like, what are you saying? She, this, this girl is like young enough to be your daughter. You know that, right? Also, Chris created a nickname for Zhao, calling her Mai Mai. And Chris kept showing Mai Mai? her a ton of attention, saying things like, Mai Mai, you need to wait for me to get back from running my errands. You promise? You promise? It was so strange that later after Chris Wu left, Angela Baby and Zhao were talking together and she told Zhao, hey, don't worry about Chris and his weird goodbye. Like, don't take it seriously. He's just being weird. Meaning probably like, just go home. <laughs> Chris kept trying to create opportunities for him to be alone with Zhao and Angela Baby would very smoothly indicate that Zhao didn't want that because it didn't look like she wanted it. In another episode, Chris turned off the lights and said that his plan was to play a haunted house game and he starts trying to freak out Zhao, just like basically talking to her and saying things like, now imagine you're trapped here alone, my my, and suddenly someone walks over like this, like a vampire or a zombie, and they're trying to touch you. And as he reaches closer and closer, Angela Baby goes, no touching, like nothing like that. Chris keeps going and he's like, and he's gonna get super close to you. And he keeps getting closer and closer. And Zhao clearly looks uncomfortable and she like manages to dodge and tries to be smooth about it. And finally, when it was time for Zhao to leave the show, she drew a little cartoon on Chris's hand. It's like a show of friendship, right? The next day, her last day, he still has the drawing on her hand. And it's not like she did it with like permanent marker. And even if it is, like it washes off, right? And he straight up tells her he didn't want to wash his hands. He didn't want to wash it off. Everyone laughed it off, but Angela Baby genuinely looked kind of shocked and weirded out by it. Like, unbelievable. That was the vibe. So, I mean, it feels like he was really giving people the ick and doing some alarming things. But Chris kept going. He said that DMZ was lying and that they were going to take legal action. Meanwhile, his fan club was still supporting him. They showered him with support, loving messages. They would say things like, we absolutely support him. We believe the truth will come out. But the evidence against him was just piling up. A netizen from the US posted about a cocktail party she had been to in LA, 2019. It was a party at his hotel. His assistant and his friend were there. And they invited seven to eight girls over. And after several rounds of what they felt like was almost like screening, like eliminations, girls were sent home like one by one. And then there was just one girl left at the hotel. 
And she didn't have her phone because, like, all the other girls, their phones were taken from them. And the whole time, the energy was just weird. The girls were constantly asked about their ages. And weirdly, he asked every girl to sing a song for them, like, freestyle. That's and creepy. if they didn't sing or rap well, he would force them to drink. The poster also said that she remembered seeing a round medicine-like tablet at the party, but she had no idea if anyone was drugged. She ended up leaving, but she learned that the last girl was essentially forced to stay and ended up engaging in sexual activity with Chris Wu. So finally, July 22nd of 2021, the Beijing police released a statement and they said this, like they have been investigating, and they said, Chris Wu did choose concubines by selecting women through his agents, and he did confiscate their phones when they were invited to his parties. He had sex with DMZ, who was 18 at the time and not a minor. During the investigation, DMZ admitted that she initially wanted to expose him and maybe gain some attention from it. The article that DMZ wrote was written on her behalf by an online writer. The writer embellished some of the things written. Chris's mom reported to the police that they were being blackmailed by DMZ, but the truth of the investigation exposed that there was another party involved, one that was playing both sides. The, mom. the person that blackmailed Chris Wu was not DMZ, but a stranger who had nothing to do with this, and his name was Liu, and he's 23 years old, and he had since been arrested. Let's talk about this whole thing. Oh, yeah. Remember how DMZ was asking for money, right? For all the victims to share. Okay. There's this guy, Lou, who had been watching all of this. He has no connection to any of these people. He doesn't have connections to the victims or to Chris and his team. He's just a regular, like, netizen. And he decided to make a fake account on WeChat and add DMZ, pretending to be a victim of Chris Wu. So he's impersonating a girl, impersonating to be a victim. He talked to her. DMZ opened up. She even sent him a few text messages between her and Chris that weren't released yet. This is important. He then used these text messages to create another fake account, wow. pretending to be DMZ's personal account, like another side account of DMZ's, messaged Chris Wu's attorney and said, hey, look at the other messages that I have yet to release. Pay me money. Wow. And he, talking to Chris Wu's lawyer, settled on $500,000. And his plan was to get the money directly into his account, right? And that would be the end of it. But the lawyer said they needed DMZ's account with DMZ's name on it. So then he made another WeChat account and posed as Chris's attorney and messaged DMZ wow. and started fake negotiations with the DMZ asking her, don't you want money from this? Blah, blah, blah. So they reached a settlement after a ton of negotiation, which side note, the contract that was super messed up that could potentially put DMZ in jail, that actually was from Chris's team. That was? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay. they're really evil. They gave it to Lou thinking it was DMZ. And then Lou just forwarded it to DMZ because he did need her signature to get the rest of the money yeah. because they too were going to give it in batches, right? Uh -huh. So um, his plan was to give DMZ's account, but later for the rest of the money, because again, Chris's team is giving it in batches, after the signed contract, he was going to say, hey, actually, this is DMZ, but can you send it to like my friend's account instead or another victim's account instead? Uh -huh. And then he would give his account. So he wouldn't get the full amount, but he would get something. Playing very dangerous game here. He uh -huh. is. And so DMZ does get $70,000 in her account from Chris's team, but she refused to sign the agreement, so the rest wasn't coming to her. Now, Lou saw the perfect opportunity and told her, pretending to be Chris's attorney still, still catfishing her, and said, if you don't sign it, you gotta return the money. And he gave her his bank information to return the money. She returned it, and Lou made seventy thousand dollars. So freaking dumb! Like, <sighs> your your now your account is forever flagged. Yeah, and he was arrested. Yeah, because it's pretty easy to track money. He was playing both sides, but it just came back to bite him in the butt. So the police released all of this, and they also announced Chris Wu's allegations were still being investigated. At this point, even the authorities were fully involved, and all of this was coming to light. People were still on DMZ saying that she just wanted fame and they were annoyed because she gained like 5 million followers in 4 days. They said she finally achieved her goals. But does it really matter? You know, like fine, yeah. I wonder she if she's still on she Instagram right now. Of attention at first, but still victims don't act the way that you want them to. No. Like I think a lot of victims when you are victimized like that, you think, "Okay, fine. You know what? Like this person, I hate this person. Let's not be miserable. Let's try to find this some lemonade and this 
situation, right? Like there's no default energy that should come from victims. And I think it's very selfish for us to think that. So anyway, people were mad at her. But either way, DMZ putting herself out there and putting these allegations out there regardless of her original intention, a lot of victims came forward and they started to get justice. So it seemed like even DMZ didn't know how deep and how serious Chris's actions were. So maybe she just thought that this guy was ghosting her and love bombing her and just a toxic person and very predatory, but she probably didn't realize the extent. And then it became like, wow, this is actually so serious. A lot of people were really concerned that Chris had an obsession with young girls in charity. A lot of his fans were just so grossed out and disappointed in him. They felt so dirty for even supporting this guy to begin with. But like, how can you even blame yourself for that? I think it's also good to see the good in people. So, like, I don't know. It just sucks. And then the agent, Fang Meng, let's be real. His agent is almost acting like a pimp procuring yeah, these girls. Yeah, 100%. For him. It's just so bizarre. Like, she's really messed up, too. July 31st of 2021, Chris Wu was detained on in Beijing of suspicion of rape. And even then, Chris still had fans yeah, who would show up at the jail. But you can't do a meet and greet in jail. I don't know who didn't tell you that. Like, that's just bonkers. And then finally, August 16th of 2021, um, Chris was officially arrested for suspicion of rape, meaning the police felt like they had solid evidence to go to trial. Chris was also erased. Yeah, that's a thing that happens in China. So in America, you get canceled. In China, you get erased from the internet. Like every video, everything of you just gets taken down as if you never existed. That's good. 1.9 million short form videos, 7,000 videos, TV series, variety shows, everything deleted, gone, wiped, done. Finally, November of 2022, Chris was sentenced to 11 years and six months for rape and 22 months for promiscuity, 13 years in total. He was also slapped with an $85 million fine for tax evasion. The investigation concluded that between November and December of 2020, Chris Wu raped three women who were drunk and unconscious, and because he's Canadian, after serving his sentence, he's going to be deported to Canada. He will be 44 years old when he gets out in 2034. Side note, prison in China is not fun. Not that it's fun anywhere, but... um. This is what the toothbrushes look like. They're the length of a thumb. It's very soft. It's silicone, so you can't hurt yourself. Everything's really soft. And you eat bland food. You have to work eight hours a day. Apparently, prison labor is huge in Beijing. Um, the Beijing prisons are known for producing, which, like, prison labor is a thing in America, too, just so you know. They produce a ton of ballpoint pens and charging cables. Even the 2008 Olympics that was hosted in Beijing, all the costumes and props of the actors, a lot of them were made by prisoners. They do get paid. Oh. But like America, prison wages, so not real wages. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Very little wages compared to what Chris was making on his shows. But he could get out on good behavior. But he will be deported to, chi- to Canada. And it's speculated that he might go to jail in Canada too. Because under Canadian law, citizens who commit felonies abroad, even when they finish their sentences and are sent back to Canada, they might be charged again because Canada's like, wait, we don't want you out in the streets if you're a danger to us, to the world, depending on the severity of the crime. So this was a pretty high-profile case. It's a sex offender case, you know, so I guess we'll see. And Chris is being sued by a woman in Los Angeles who said that she was underage when he had sex with her while he was there for work, which means is he going to go to the U.S. to face charges? I don't know because right now it's a civil lawsuit, not a criminal lawsuit. I guess we'll see. That was insane, bro. Like, he had every possibility. He was living the dream. You know, just like she said, his his uh manager was acting like a pimp she was going out finding these girls from him keep harassing them sending messages and messages and messages oh come meet chris Wu. chris Wu's here oh wait you don't want any money hey he wants to meet you oh wait a minute maybe you want to be in a music video it can help boost your career and uh, go to school and be great and do all these other things but chris Wu is here this is your chance to take this and seize this opportunity to make your life great and he was around here taking advantage of people i do understand what stephanie was saying because there was a person that i met in the military that was um charged for certain crime and he had to do time in that country and then he was going to be transferred over to our side of which of the country which was in the state to do time there and then i don't know if he was facing any other charges after that the way they do it is if you break the law overseas at least of course where i was if you break the law overseas you do time there and then you have to come back and face other charges because technically you're under the united states military so you would have to go back and face uh charges from under that state as well 
and it's just like you're just going to keep tacking on charges and it's like it does not play uh, i would never want to do a crime and get arrested in a foreign country like united states prisons are bad don't get me wrong but if you want to see some of these prisons go watch on netflix the world's toughest prison it's going to make united states look like a playground 100 percent. i would never want to go to a jail in poland or any of those places china bro they will work you ain't no i'm sneaking a cell phone in here and doing all that bro no they do not play um i'm really glad that dmz did not back down i'm glad that she did i was like oh my god if she does this then this is not going to make any of the other uh victims uh testimony credit and uh credible because she just really much signed her life away i'm glad she was smart enough to go and get a lawyer read that contract because if she would have signed that contract he would still be out today making uh money and probably prowling and, and uh being a predator to other young girls around here so uh like they mentioned you know some people are, doesn't matter what you do they're still going to have your back they're still going to look out for you where no matter it's just your celebrity man people are just not going to believe it not my celebrity oh not me it could never be right that's just people's way of thinking man you know some people have to see it to believe it and sometimes when people do see it it's still not enough for them they don't care pretty much at the bottom line of it but uh yeah this video was insanely intense like it wasn't creepy until he was like you know when he started kind of displaying things of like being a mama boy kind of like threw me off a little bit like why are you so old and you're like really under your mama's wing and talking about sigly piggly and joe you go with me it's time to go home now huh? like yeah you're weird you're like on camera trying to touch somebody and you see she's like weaving like bro don't put your hand in my face and he's steady trying to touch her this video was crazy man thank you guys so much for recommending it to me um i really appreciate you guys stopping in and tuning into these videos i really appreciate it if you guys haven't already make sure you soup down the description box Kind of link to watch this video in entirety because I was pausing, stopping, and talking through the whole thing. If you guys are new to the channel, my name is Zims, and welcome to the Crow's Nest. You guys already know the deal. If you have recommendations, let me know. Just know that you guys are loved on this channel. Remember, this channel is a safe space. So if you have any concerns or you want any clarifications, feel free to let me know down in the comment section. Myself or the other uh, people in the Crow's Nest will try their best to help you. From what I've seen, a lot of people have been reaching out to each other and talking amongst each other in the comment section and helping each other out. Um, I really, really appreciate that. Like I said, we're all responsible for each other whether we know each other or not no matter from america china brazil you know amsterdam france italy it doesn't matter we're all responsible for each other um make sure you guys are safe be aware of your surroundings if you see something say something because a lot of people don't have a voice so sometimes it's up to us to be the voice for that person i'm trying to hurry up and speak because i got like two minutes left on my battery one minute left on my battery but again i love you guys be safe hope you guys enjoyed this video i know i didn't really talk too much wasn't really much i could speak on but i did do my best but with that being said Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.